your weekend? Hey guys, we're back live right here at CubsCon. Evan with Cubs Insider, and we are joined now with Jason McLeod of the Cubs VP of Scouting. So, uh, Evan, why don't we turn it over to you and uh, just kind of hop right into things. I'm really interested to hear what uh, what's, what we're going to be looking forward to this season. All right, sounds good. Well, thanks for thanks for joining us, first of all. And so I know uh, it's a little busy here, right? I, I heard <laughs> yeah, exactly. We we've been getting the, the reminders. I know it's become a, a popular thing online to remind people, but the, you know, you, you remember that the Cubs won the World Series, right? This is kind of a big deal here. Yeah, it's pretty phenomenal. Uh, you, know, you never get tired of, of watching uh, the Game Seven highlights, especially. But uh, you know, when you, you take the time to you know look through the back at the, the entire season, but specifically the postseason, and then. Yeah, you get into that uh, the big ballroom last night where they had the opening ceremonies, and uh, to be able to relive it with the fans that were in there, uh, just you know, tremendous, tremendous feeling of emotion, uh, and just remembering that we did this you know, two months ago or whatever it's been now. Um, but it's it's pretty awesome. You, you feel the energy of, of all the Cubs fans that are here, and, and it's great, of course, to see the players that we haven't seen since since uh, you know, the parade and. and uh, this is always the, the kickoff to the season. Really, we know that spring training is uh, around the corner in a couple of weeks. Uh, we're making all of our uh, preparations for that, and uh, soon enough, the you know, guys will be back in Myrtle Beach, and uh, the season will be up and running. Well, so you know, talking about Myrtle Beach, and we're here in the, in the, in the Mayfair room. We've got all the minor league affiliates here, and, and, and you know, you've overseen over the last five years. There's been you know an overhaul on, on a couple of different fronts, right? We got different affiliates. Um, there's been moves there. And to see what the change has happened to where this is a legitimate pipeline, sending guys up. So, I mean, how fulfilling has that been for you, just professionally and personally, to see that happen? You know, when you when you uh, try to drop a plan of, of how you hope things will go, uh, to be able to visualize it and then go out and execute it, you know, whether it's acquiring talent, whether it's uh, which is going to be on the field or acquiring talent, you know, in, in the terms of scouts or front office or coaching staff to looking for first class facilities and first class cities. Uh, you know, when we showed up in the fall of twenty eleven, things look you know, so drastically different now when you you know, since that time we've we brought our Dominican Academy online and, and the new facility down in Mesa, uh, two new affiliates, um, and, and being in a place like Myrtle Beach in that city, in that community, uh, a great ballpark for for, for pitching, a great ballpark to develop hitters that can use the entire field, uh, to the other affiliates that, that have come online since we've been here. You know, we're at this really, uh, this moment in time where, especially now we're coming off of, of fulfilling a 100-year you know, uh, uh, trek that, uh, you know, it, it doesn't stop there. The renovation of Wrigley is continuing. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got new offices opening up for us in uh, two months. I'll be ready when we come back from spring training. So, the building continues. The challenge for us continues in scouting and player development to um, to go out and, and you know replenish the pipeline. Um, yeah, we lost uh, an incredibly talented player last year in Glaber Torres. We traded him for, for Chapman, and uh, we understand that you've got to make those types of deals if you're if you're hoping to win the World Series, and we did. Uh, but now the the onus is on us as, as scouting and player development staff to go identify. Uh, acquire those guys and, and develop them to help uh, the future major league club. Uh, Cubs. We talk about developing those players. You know, Torres is one where um, I actually got the chance to see him play in the playoffs two seasons ago when he had, had come up. Uh, he had been at, at low A and he came up late. You know, there's been uh, it, at least it seems from the outside there's uh, bringing these guys up. We're, we're keeping them in a place to experience that that playoff baseball and, and to kind of experience what that winning is going to be like at those lower levels as they're coming up. Is that something that you had sought out to do from the from the first stages, or is that something that sort of came along organically? A, a little bit of both. I think you know, we, we've done it in the past where you, know, you identify uh, some young players that you feel are going to have an impact on your organization, and uh, you want to put them in these positions where, uh, you know, Joe Madden talked about it a little bit last night, where you get them out of their comfort zone and you challenge them somewhat. And, you know, we did it a few years ago when we drafted Albert Almora, the year that we uh, drafted him and signed him. He was in Arizona all, all summer. Um, and our Boise affiliate at the time was, was going to be in the playoffs. So we wanted, to, we wanted him to uh, get that type of experience. So we, we moved him at the end of the year, similar to what we did with Glaber uh, two off se or two seasons ago. And, yeah, so when the timing's right, if we can do that with certain players, um, certainly players that we feel are going to uh, hopefully have an impact on our major league club at some point, 
uh, we try to put him in those positions to give him that experience and um, have him play in that environment. It's so much about minor league baseball. It's just player development, working on player plans, uh, certain specific fundamentals for that day. Um, we don't always emphasize the winning part of it, and that's an opportunity uh, you know, as a team's pushing for a playoff. Uh, spot or in the playoffs, that's an opportunity to just you got to go out and win a ball game tonight, mm -hmm. and uh, and and it's you know very meaningful and impactful for them to go through that. Well, so one one thing that I've really noticed, and again from the outside seeing this, is is that it doesn't feel as though whether it be social media and the teams kind of messing around with each other a little bit, whether it be just their their willingness to to work with one another in a capacity like this here at Cubs Convention, it's not five separate fingers, it's, it really is a, a fist, and that's had some kind of an impact for you guys, hasn't it? It really does, man. It, we're so, I don't like to use this word lightly and throw it around, but we are incredibly blessed to have uh, the affiliates that we have, um, you know, and the relationships that we have with our affiliates is, uh, it, it's unlike anything I've experienced in baseball, and, and being in you know, Major League Baseball now for going on my 24th season. Um, we have great relationships with the ownership groups, with the front offices that are there. Um, unfortunately, you know, outside of maybe spring training, and even then, you know, you'll get a few GMs or some teams, they'll come in, like, sporadically at different times. Really, the only time we're together as a group is at the winter meetings. Uh, when we, we are all together, and we always host a, uh, you know, reception. Um, and it's a really fun time, because Joe Madden's there, you know, Theo, and and we all get to get up and speak and really show our appreciation for our affiliates. But you know, they get to they get the audience with Theo and Jed and Joe, and it's just a chance for all of us to hobnob together because you know we are a family here, and we, we try to, our best to make sure that you know, whether you're in Myrtle or, or South Bend or Tennessee, or Eugene, wherever you're at, like we want you to feel a part of what's happening in Chicago. We want you to feel a part of that vibe uh, because they are so integral to helping us get where we want to be, and that's A, a first-class organization, B, developing our players. Um, and, you know, you might work in radio broadcasting for Myrtle, or you might work the merch tent at South Bend or whatever, but we want to do whatever we can to make you feel like you know, we're all Cubs here, we're all part uh, of trying to get to, to what happened uh, this past year, and now you know, the goal is to, to do it again. Well, that's something we've seen. I, th I think the example is set at the highest level, right? And, and you see that. I think when we, when we see the guys from the front office, when we see out there in the bleachers, right? And it looks from the top down to everyone as if you, ingenu you genuinely enjoy, not just on a professional level, because there's obviously been a lot of success, but on a personal level, working together from that from the top all the way down through the organization. No doubt. I mean, if I come into Myrtle, uh, I, I hope that I can get a, a, an audience with Andy. And go sit in the office and just talk about how things are I going. I try to avoid Andy generally, well. <laughs> but I, I don't know. I will um, say if I can jump in. He, he did say to say hello, and I was supposed to bring, I apologize, a, uh, a little mini bottle of Jack for you. Uh, just to say, hey, well, see post game, maybe we'll get together uh, next year and, and have a drink in the office after a game in Myrtle. So. Well, that, that's where we have our best conversations. They're in the yeah. office, bottle of Jack, and we're talking about how things are going. <laughs> uh, or Alan. Yeah, I've had many. Absolutely. Libations <laughs> with Mr. Benavides over there in Eugene, or Joe Hart in South Bend, and you know, on down the list, Brian Cox in Tennessee, San Bernardino. I mean, these guys are cops. You know, they're all part of the family, um, and we're. I'm so fortunate that I get to go to all these affiliates, and I get to spend time with not just our coaching staff, but spend time with the front office there. You know, it's it's just as important to us that you know, we ask. Everybody, what what can we do better for you guys? It's it, it generally always is the GMs asking us, is there anything more we can be doing? And yeah, we want to, we want all everyone to know it works both ways. And uh, yeah, we want them to be just as proud of us and being affiliated with the Cubs and anything that we can do to to, to certainly help uh, their respective affiliates. It's gonna be pretty rough to have to travel down to Myrtle Beach for for work. It's, yeah, right? there's there's not much else to do down there. It's kind of sure. hard when you're like you're by the beach. There's some golf there. I mean, it's it really impedes the work that can get done when you're down there. You know, it's it's a hard place to take the family down to and everything. I know I I, I keep trying to do that. They keep inviting me down. I gotta I gotta like I said they. They actually let me come back after singing there, so I don't know. Maybe they... I don't know. I was just telling the guys in Eugene, it's just, it's tough to go up there and, and hike along the rivers right? and take a ride out to Bend. And, 
maybe go catch a team in Vancouver or something. It's, you guys just set up your affiliates it, though, you know? for places that you just want a vacation. Is that, <laughs> so, that's really, I think we've uncovered the key to the organizational development. That tends to play a role in the summer schedule, I guess. <laughs> right. That's for sure. Well, I know, um, you know, watching that and seeing some of these guys come up, you know, we had Rob Zastrizny over here. We had uh, Jamie Candelario come through. I mean, that that was something I think for the longest time, you know, Cubs fans got a little bit jumpy about we, we'd seen these names and, and they didn't quite pan out. But you guys have had a tremendous track record over the last several years of having them come up and find success. Is that about the player? Is that about the development? Uh, can you speak to that success that we've seen of late? Well, it's it's first and foremost all about the player. Uh, they're the they're the ones with the talent. You know, we certainly try to surround them with and give them everything that we possibly can to maximize their abilities. But um, you know, it's about who they are. It's about how they're driven. Um, and then it's up to us to to put a plan in place that hopefully you know, puts them in position to succeed. And you know, I've only been in Myrtle for a couple of years, but you know, we've got we've gotten a sense of pretty good players through there. And, um, you know, sad as we are that, that Glaber's gone now. You know, you, you have Ian Happ going through there. You've got you got Glimpse of Eloy Jimenez, uh, who's going to be a special player in the major leagues. Um, so there's there's been still, we, and that's always our goal is like to, to you know keep that chain going, keep it going, and you know, we're excited for some of the players that are likely going to be on that roster this year. We finally feel like we're at a point in time where. We've got some the impact type pitching mm-hmm. that, is on, that, are, that is on the way. I think you guys will be excited to see the arms that will be in that rotation this year. So, um, you know, it's fun for us. And, and it's fun, I think, as well for the fans that get to see these guys as able players and then see them perform on the biggest stage uh, once they do get to the major league. Well, there's a lot of those guys. Everybody's heard about the, you know, the top flight. I mean, obviously, you know, Jimenez and, and being on that big stage at the Futures game and, and hitting the home run and making the catch. But who are, who are maybe some guys, if we're looking forward to here, since we are here, and we, can, we can maybe address some of the other affiliates if we have to, but we're here with Myrtle B. So <laughs> yeah. who, are, who are some of the guys at Myrtle right now who are maybe a little bit under the radar who fans should be looking out for? Um, I'm talking about that was on last year's team who might, or who might be coming. Who, who's going to who's gonna be there now in Myrtle for this year? Or, you yeah. know, go, uh, go either way with it. Well, I like? think, you know, even like, you look at last year's team, um, a guy who came up in the middle of the season, Donnie DeLees, is someone that you know, I, I think is going to make a name for himself in the, in the coming years. Um, more of a, if you saw him, he's more of a throwback type guy. You feel like you're watching someone in the 50s play, but uh, he can really hit uh, a lot of speed, obviously. Um, I think players that you're going to have coming to the team this year. Uh, well, you got, we already talked about Eli. Um, yeah, we have a guy that we converted last year to catch him full time uh, named PJ Higgins. That's a pretty interesting. Uh, catching a uh, conversion guy. We had a second baseman in South Bend named uh, Car- Carlos Sepulveda that I think the team, you guys are really enjoy watching play. Um, you know, some of the arms, Oscar De La Cruz, that, that should be in that rotation. Uh, you might see a guy like a Thomas Hatch, who was our first pick out of the draft last year, going into Merle with a little more power and swinging this stuff. Um, so, you know, we feel really good about the volume of guys. You know, being that we don't pick now anymore at the top of the draft, and hopefully we don't in any time in the next 10, 10 years. Um, it's really uh, inherent on us to still go get a, you know, impact guys, upside players, um, and, and we're pretty excited about that prospect. And now this year, um, we actually have two first-round picks, which will be exciting. Uh, because last year we had to sit around until pick 104, and, and that was uh, a really tough thing to do. But, um, you know, we're really excited about some of the, the prospects that will be there. And, and, again, you know, Myrtle, we've had some success there, obviously, in the last couple of years, and look forward to a, another one this year. So I know, uh, you know, talk about the draft position and where you'll be drafting this year. Obviously, it's been with, with Almora and Bryant and Schwarber and Happ. Other, other than Almora, who obviously coming out of high school, but, you know, there had been some really high-level more polished college bats, guys who could really shoot through the system a little quicker. But I know after that, there have been a real run on, on pitchers. They're, they've been kind of under their – does that strategy – and I know you can't just be binary and say, well, because we pick here, we will do this. But how does that strategy change now that you're at the at the bottom of the draft? Uh, and, and obviously the needs are different at the big league club now too. Absolutely. I mean, yeah, we're still – we're always going to be in a, you know acquisition mode in terms of uh, trying to get as much young talent as we possibly can. You know, at the same time – you know, you're not getting Chris Bryant when you're picking 27th. You're not getting Kyle Schwarber when you're picking 30th. Um, Ian Happ, those types of guys won't be at the bottom of the first round. So, um, you know, 
definitely hyper focused on pitching and starting pitching. Uh, that 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 will remain. But you know, at the same time, every draft is, is different. It's it's just dependent on you know what the talent base is that year. Uh, we're always going to shoot for impact and upside. And I think one thing that our two things one our major league team is so young in terms of position players. Uh, there isn't so much of a need to go get a, a, a polished college bat. So, you know, we're going to definitely um, mix the, the upside impact player, no matter what where he comes from, high school, college, uh, with our reality of, you know, we do need to still develop uh, starting pitching. Well, and uh, I know the some changes in the CBA as far as the international rules uh, with that signing. Can you speak a little bit to how that maybe changes the strategy on an international basis? <laughs> well, simply put, it's, you know, with, with the – the bigger market clubs like ourselves at hamstrings is somewhat um, a little bit at a disadvantage in terms of not having as, as much financial flexibility as some other teams. Um, but that doesn't change the fact that it, it becomes just a true scouting competition. You still have to go identify players. Your scouts still need to go out and tell you, you know, project on what a guy can do physically, but, but even more importantly, you know, project and tell you how this kid's wired, how important it is to him, how hard he's going to work. Kind of teammate he's going to be, all of those things that are that are equally as important. So, in that regard, it is still a scouting competition. You know, maybe we won't have uh, the ability because of the CDA to go get multiple players like in an off season when we signed Eloy and Glaber Torres in the same off season. But you know, you can still go get very talented players um, like your Oscar De La Cruz's of the world um, for that you don't have to spend that much money mm-hmm. on, and that really. It means that you got to lean on your uh, international scouting staff. And just like we'll do the same thing in the draft, um, you know, with the pool of money that we have, whether it was last year, not picking until the third round, um, or this year having two first-round picks, the, the process doesn't change and the expectations don't change in terms of how we're going to work and the type of information that we're going to require of our scouts. Now, can you can you talk a little? I know we we've talked about family here, and, and it's on the shirts we see out here. We brought that up. We uh, talked with Jamer about that a little bit too. As as you know, he's a young guy coming up, uh, trying to you know. There's a cultural shift. There's it, it's a little bit different for a kid who grew up in the states, who, whether it was high school or whether it's coming out of college. Can you talk to how you're able to support those guys who are coming up 17, yeah. 18 years old? So one of the you know one of the things that we've done that's been pretty neat over the last couple of years is. Yeah, you know, first with this academy in in the Dominican that uh, that the Ricketts family so graciously invested in, um, we're able to do a lot there with just education, um, and that's that's in the form of you know not just English classes. It's it's talking like a, a formal you know, education as if they were in school still in the Dominican um, to just assimilation things that they're going to need to learn if they're coming over to the states. Um, and then once they've gotten here, we've We've uh, built up our, our mental skills department over the last three years. Uh, we hired a, a gentleman away from uh, IMG Academy in Florida to be our director of mental skills, and that we have built that department up to where there's four full-time people in it now. Um, and that they develop really a curriculum for all of our players uh, to really develop as human beings more than anything. Not I shouldn't say more than anything, but to develop to develop their, themselves as human beings in addition to getting them you know, the mental skills necessary to perform at the highest level on the biggest stage. So that's become almost like a full-time um, agenda for the, our players where they have a, like a curriculum going throughout the year, and it's it's all season. It, it doesn't stop when the players go home. There's constant follow-up. Um, you know, we want our players to develop, to develop as people, as human beings, because even when our guys end up, leaving baseball, which the majority of minor league players will. I mean, it's just the reality. Um, you know, 80% or whatever it is are not going to play in the big leagues. You know, can we still give them some tools and give them people to be productive members of society? And that's one thing we've challenged our mental skills staff on. And it's something that we take a lot of pride in. And so dependent on level, dependent on if it's a Latin player, their um, English-speaking capabilities. And we do have a full-time Latin level skills uh, person, um, you know, we, we build the curriculum based on that individual player in hopes of uh, developing him to his fullest. And this, this might be kind of a big question, so I don't know how I can dial this down, but what, what are the goals for 
the minor league system? I mean, what what are we trying to accomplish? Or you, I, I suppose, I uh, you know, unless I'm hired to be a part of the staff, then it can be we. But uh, we'll talk about that later. Uh, but you know, what, what are the goals for uh, for the affiliates, maybe as a whole, going into next season? Well, in a utopian society, we would uh, win six championships in the minor right, leagues, right. and all these guys would get to the big leagues. But Look, the function of your minor league system is to provide major league players, um, and that's really that's that's the goal. Um, so, you know, it always starts with can we develop talented impact players, either for our major league team or to you know, get in a trade to go acquire the talent that we need. Um, so that's always the goal. That starts there. But from that, um, you know, it's it's bigger than that in the sense of. You know, there is a family here. Um, we're all fortunate to be Cubs. Um, we want everybody to feel like they're part of you know, what happened on November 2nd, as they should. Um, we want to develop all of our players to be good members in your communities when they're there. Um, you know, that's another thing we've talked about a lot with the mental skills and with all the respective staffs, with what they do with their charitable organizations and their communities. Uh, we think that's an incredibly important part of the experience of being a professional baseball player, whether whether you're in Myrtle or, or whether you're outside of Knoxville. You know, the impact that you can have on little kids, the impact you can have by going to a children's hospital or, or whatever it might be to do a thing you know, for an inner city kid. You don't have to be in Chicago to do those things. You can do those things at some point. You can do it at you can eat. And, um, so those are things that, again, help develop the person fully. Um, yeah, we'd love to win at all levels, of course. I, we do, I do feel like that's an important part of development is understanding what it takes to actually win a baseball game and an important baseball game in a, in a playoff environment. Uh, but always our, our our most important function of the minor leagues is to develop players, impact players for the team. And is there, I mean, do you have do you set goals and say, hey, at, at Myrtle Beach, we'd like to see you know, when, a, when a player's at that high A level Here's what we want to see from them in terms of development, you know, before they move on to, to say Absolutely. Tennessee and beyond. Every player has their own individual player plan, mm -hmm. um, and dependent on position, dependent on age, uh, we we have you know some benchmarks that we would like to see by the time they're at certain levels, no doubt about it. And we have certain benchmarks that aren't simply performance related, you know, that isn't showing up in the box score or on the stat sheet. We have, you know, it might be. You know, other things that are more fundamentally based that dependent on position that he'll need to do if he's going to succeed at the upper levels or succeed here in Chicago, the type of player we're going to ask him to be. So those will be on all those player plans. We meet with them three times a year. They're constantly addressed, uh, and they're individualized to each guy. So it's not, you know, all position players at Myrtle need to be doing this in order to move to Tennessee. It's just all dependent on the individual player. Well, and I know uh, Chris is going to start kicking me so we can get to uh, to our game here pretty shortly, but the last thing I, I know you you love all the kids down here equally but Myrtle Beach is your favorite right we can we can say that nobody's listening everybody else is turning <laughs> Eugene around. is listening I guarantee you yes. <laughs> the beautiful we've been thing having about, a little back and forth all weekend <laughs> the beautiful thing about our organization is just that like every place has such so much to offer in their own unique yeah. way that we uh, we are spoiled to get to go to all these places and, and, and I mean that sincerely it's uh, whether it's driving to South End and, and that beautiful facility they have there or you know my kids love well, they love every affiliate and I take them to every affiliate but um, everyone is like special in its own way I mean the Smoky Mountains are so beautiful to being on the beach in Myrtle Beach to being in the the mountains and the rivers up there in Eugene um, to Des Moines, like the sneaky, cool downtown vibe of Des Moines. Um, I look forward to going air to every place, but more, more, even, more so is just because of all the people that work in the front office that we enjoy. I've always spent time with, except for Andy. Anyway, <laughs> no, and you, you mentioned your uh, your family, and I, I think when we talked two years ago, your your son was with you. Um, is this which? I think he sat in on the interview, so you'll have to tell him that, that we said hello and, and we will. missed him today. I will. He's got a basketball, a couple of basketball games. Uh, that there. was going to be my question, yeah. is if, uh, if if this Cubs convention was a family family affair for you this year. Not this yeah. year, only because now they're at their ages where they've got all their extracurricular things going on. So it's like I've got one more panel after this, and then i got to hightail it back up to uh, Evanston for – a birthday party and a basketball game. And then come back down tomorrow for the, the uh, down the farm thing. 
All right, well, we'll wrap up quick here so uh, <laughs> so you can get on to your next itinerary. It's uh, just a quick game. We've been playing yeah. little games with the, with the guys all morning. Um, so basically, I'll uh, I'll give Evan this card, and it is a title of a well-known movie. Mm -hmm. He's got five seconds. Uh, use any you can okay. characters, whatever, just not the movie title. Okay, we can do that. All right. And uh, actually, let's do this real first. We're gonna show the audience here what uh, okay. what the the movie is. Yes. All right, right here. Cousin Eddie. Come on, you're gonna insult me by even asking. <laughs> Well, I, I was told early, I was told earlier I couldn't even name characters. And I'm like, well, yeah, well, it's only five I, seconds. Yeah, then, I, then, I, then I offered a. Right. An, an All right, this time we'll uh, we'll give you a chance to give to give Evan one. Oh, I saw oh, it. I, saw, I saw it already. So don't, oh, okay. don't show well, that okay. one. You saw that one already? Yeah, because okay. you you held it. You oh, okay. Sorry. Honesty, that so was no the best policy. Yes. No character names. No, right? no, you can use character names. Say whatever you need to, just not the title of the movie. Oh. Can I kind of throw them off, though? Because I've never seen this movie, but I know what I can say. Well, if you say. want to win the game, then you can just... <laughs> All right. Lou Gehrig. 61? <laughs> That's the... I don't, I've never seen this movie, but his nickname was this. Superhero? Right? Am I right? I'm saying that? No. Su yeah. Okay. Right? There you go. That's what I said, Lou. Sorry. I I, I've you. never seen the movie. Oh, I apologize. I, I, should I do All right. So one? We'll, oh. we'll, we'll let Evan go, and then okay. you can do the last two. Oh, we got to show everybody what this is here. Okay. My lack of movie knowledge is going to come out. It's in the hole. Um, oh, that's a uh, catch. Boom. See? Yeah. There you go. All right. Jason, well, you'll give these last two. Okay. Evan, look I away. I hope I've seen these. Oh. I would hope yes. so. Yes. <laughs> Dad, want to play catch? Oh, Field of Dreams. There we go. See? All right. And our that. last one, Jason, will give a clue as well. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, Star Wars. <laughs> oh, you totally. <laughs> okay. That was, I was like, he's using oh, the okay. force. Oh, yeah, see, that's that's what it was. He well, used the force. Used the force. All right. <laughs> Boom. Well, that thank you very much, Jason, thank you guys for stopping by. I really fun. appreciate the insight. A lot insight. of fun. Look forward to getting back down to Myrtle Beach this year. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I think that's going to do it from uh, from us here in Myrtle today as far as interviews goes. Big thanks Have to one, Evan everybody. and Cubs Insider for helping us out today. Me and uh, lots of stuff going on still on social media with us. So check us out uh, online, Twitter, Facebook. We're all here. Take care. See ya. Bye. Ooh, awesome. <laughs> Sorry about the Oh, no.